and uh, today we're going to continue the discussion um, to talk about the formulas for compounds in this case we are evolving from the concept about uh, uh, the empirical formula covered in the previous uh, vocast and now we're focusing on actually on the molecular formulas first let's define what a molecular formulas are for the compounds and you've seen that uh, many many times uh, essentially molecular formula of a chemical compound is identifies the number of each type of atom in a molecule and uh, case in point let's uh, bring up some of the compounds we've been exploring like uh, first one would be the calcium carbonate as you can see the calcium carbonate and would have a uh, formula it would be CaCO3 as we can say it here it will specify for every one unit of calcium carbonate you have a one calcium and one carbon and uh, three oxygen and let's talk like uh, the some other examples uh, let's see sodium as uh, sulfate sodium sulfate would have a formula of in this in this case a molecular formula of Na2SO4 each unit will have two sodium one sulfur for oxygen and one of the very common few type uh, you encounter uh, will be the methane gas and uh, we'll have a formula of CH4 you have one carbon for uh, hydrogen those are the ones and uh, if you do the proper empirical formula calculations they actually match up perfectly with this and uh, in those cases an empirical formula molecular formula are perfectly aligned are perfectly aligned but and uh, if you move on to some other compounds the situation is going to get a little bit uh, challenging the compound we're going to explore here is uh, ethane it's a, also a very common gas and uh, the molecular formula will be C2H6 uh, which means in one mole of ethane C2H6 you should have two moles of carbon and six moles of hydrogen six moles of hydrogen and also we talked about the empirical formula empirical formula is the remember the simplest simplest whole digit interval if you ratio this two you will have two over six however you will have the one over three so in essence if you calculate all the ones from the percent mass the empirical formula for this should come out is CH3 it's the CH3 so this one is the empirical formula for ethane hmm. but that's not exactly match up with the molecular formula now we have uh, something that is empirical formula does not match with molecular formula okay so those are the ones uh, how we're going to handle that we're going to uh, that will be the focus of the topic for this uh, vault cast and uh, uh, it turns out a uh, lot of the compounds especially on what we call the organic compounds that's those are not 
matched up very well uh, but one thing uh, you can actually start uh, noticing here in this case the ethane c 2 h6 is actually you can write it into c h3 and use the parenthesis and put a 2 outside of CH3. It uh, looks like a mathematical operation because you have the CH3 uh, is kind of the fundamental unit for it. You just simply need two of this. And we'll go through some of the examples and uh, show you um, how it's going to be linked together from the empirical formula to the molecular formula and answer the question is what additional information is needed to carry out that operation and uh, one of the other examples uh, one of the examples i'm going to show you is this particular compound and in this case is c3h6 as you can see the empirical formula for that is going to be C H you're going to have one to two so the empirical formula will be C H two but the molecular formula is C three H six C three H six also you start noticing the C three H six is going to be equivalent to C H two and put a three outside is essentially you're looking at the molecular the molecule is composed of three three i say three uh empirical formula for that compound so what you can from here you can see many many examples you can actually arrive at a, a key conclusion that is crucial for this uh, section it will be molecular uh, let me make it looks nicer formula of any compound is equal to empirical of a compound of an integer, a positive integer, n, a positive integer, n. So this is a very, very important relationship. And now the question coming down say if you have the empirical formula how you get the molecular formula is essentially how you solve for n how you solve for n and here comes if the molecular formula equals empirical formula so then the uh, molar mass of the molecular formula will equal to molar mass of the empirical formula multiply by n and that only makes sense and from here n can be readily calculated by the ratio between the molar mass of empirical form uh, molecular formula divided by molar mass of the empirical formula this is the basis for calculating the molecular formula based on the what we call the white chemistry analysis now there's additional piece of information must be provided before this uh, calculation can be carried out in essence is will be the molar mass of the molecular formula the molar mass of the empirical formula is easy to get you get the empirical formula then you calculate the molar mass we've done that uh, in the previous exercises so let's pause here let's go review this key concept and it's essentially a molecular formula of any compound is composed of n 
empirical, uh, empirical formula of that compound. Because remember, the empirical formula is the simplest ratio between the elements. So simplest ratio of integers between the elements. Empirical formula is just say like how many of this uh, molecular formula is just how many of those empirical formula is building up this compound. Okay, so this case n could equal to one. If in the case n equals to one, then the molecular formula is the same as the empirical formula. If n equals two, molecular formula will be equal to empirical formula twice. And the list, you can move, go on from here. Let's take a look at then how would be the process. Uh, we start already start talking about it and uh, now just uh, list them and down to into steps as I said before. Those are the processes, those process steps. And I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example for that. And there's a compound and is to be analyzed to compose only of carbon. And uh, those are the carbon at 85.7% uh, by mass. And uh, the other uh, element composed of, uh, in this compound would just be hydrogen. And this is going to be 14.3% by mass. Okay. So now additional information will be given is the molar mass of the molecule as a whole is 64.0 grams per mole. Okay. So then question would be, what is the molecular formula? I got it. Get a hand on this. What's the molecular formula for this compound? And uh, the process is step one. Take the percent composition data calculate empirical formula for this compound and uh, we've done that uh, you should be very proficient at it now then there will be the carbon and there will be the hydrogen, carbon, there will be the hydrogen. Let's do it in this tabulated format. And in this case, 85.7%. We take 100 grams of them and convert it into the grams directly, 14.7 grams. The molar mass for carbon, remember, is 12 grams per mole. Molar mass for hydrogen, and uh, it will be 1 grams per mole. And uh, if you divide that, and that uh, will have 7.14 moles of carbon and 14.3 moles of a hydrogen. Now you start taking the ratio, mole ratio of between the carbon and hydrogen, you will say 7.14 over 14.3, and follow through with the empirical formula process. You take the smaller number divided by them, uh, you know, take all the ratio of the numbers divided by the smallest number on there, it would be 7.14. You end up with the mole ratio will be one to two. So the empirical formula in this case, I use a shorted hand notation, will be CH2, will be CH2. So it then comes down to this uh, step number two, and then you take the empirical formula, you calculate, you calculate molar mass, and sometimes we refer to uh, also as molecular weight. Okay, of the empirical formula.
Okay, so you have empirical formula CH2, then you take C, you take H, what would be the uh, molar mass? Carbon will have one mole, and uh, hydrogen you'll have two, uh, carbon you'll have 12, and you have two grams from hydrogen. So total, you're going to add up, you're going to have 14 grams per mole for the empirical formula. Then the step number three, and just to apply the concept just learned, uh, calculate N. From the ratio of molar mass of molecular formula divided by molar mass of empirical formula. So in this case, N will be equal to, uh, let's make it look nicer. Let's make them look nicer. In this case, it's molecular formula. This is case N will be the molar mass of the molecule. In this case, it's being provided. That is a key point. It has to be provided before we can actually calculate the N, in this case, it's 64.0 grams per mole. And then now you're going to divide of about 14 grams per mole. And now you have the answer N is 4. So the final answer for the molecular formula will be CH2, parenthesis, 4. A lot of times in organic chemistry, you actually have to distribute. So then this one will be C4H8. So this would be the ultimate answer for this particular question. And uh, this compound has the molecular formula of C4H8. Got four carbons. Eight hydrogen in each molecule. So with so here are some uh, exercises. There are three questions uh, asking in detail, give you the percent composition, and also uh, most importantly, give you the molar mass or molecular weight uh, of the compound and then ultimately asking well, what is the molecular formula for each of us and pause it pause this and work on it before you check on the answer for the next slide okay so the answers for those corresponding questions the molecular formula for one two three uh, respectively and uh, double check with you cross check with your answer if you have any questions or need to clarification uh, please contact your teacher right away okay so this wraps up about the broadcast for the molecular formula to sum it up molecular formula will be a positive integer that's how many of empirical formula how you obtain that number is you divide the molar mass of the compound by the molar mass of the empirical formula. So you can plan the end. So with that, that will be the end for this broadcast. Thank you very much for your attention.